The Sun Avatar is one of the best upgrades in Balloon Sea Battles 2 because it's not that expensive in this game actually. And in addition, when pairing Sun Avatar with Adora can go even crazier because with level 16 Adora, Long Arm of Light becomes more deadly and buffs Sun Avatars in range with plus 2 damage. So today, with all that being said, we will be using some Adora strategies. Let's hop right into it. Oh man, look, it's the battle of the win streaks, guys. I have an 8 win streak and my opponent has a 6 win streak. And ladies and gentlemen, we are on the map Sands of Time here with the strategy Heli Alchemist and super monkey with the door i felt like this would be a pretty fun strategy to use in today's video it's actually a really strong strategy too i haven't used it for a while so we'll start with a door here honestly probably should start with the heli but i don't know felt like starting with the dora and this should work out pretty well for me but there's a lot of strengths to this strategy i'll kind of get into it one the heli got buffed a lot recently where obviously the heli's footprint is very small so you can fit a ton of heli farms which is fantastic and that's very helpful but the main strength of the strategy the way you kind of play it is you start with your heli and your alchemist the alchemist razor rotors is your early game defense and then come later game you have a door and super monkey which is a fantastic combination but then you also have perma brew and perma brew works really well in sun avatars because sun avatars have a low base damage so the perma brew extra damage is really nice add-on so yeah there's a lot of strengths to this loadout a door and the heli off the start though it's fine if we leak too. That's another nice part about this loadout because we have life rejuvenation with the heli. So I love these late game. Oh, also, I need to turn on my late. I need to turn on my LED lights. My bad. I know you guys love the LED lights in the background, those blue lights. It's classic in my videos. But yeah, that's the nice part about these heli eco loadouts. You never really have to worry about the life count too much. You, and you don't have to worry about money as the most part for the most part either because you have old eco in the heli. And the heli old eco is actually really efficient as well. It's the king of efficiency in terms of old ecos a lot more efficient than sniper farms and druid farms so yeah let's get our farmer let's get our blue uh balloon bot down here and we will keep on ecoing i'm trying to figure out how i want to defend i'm trying to figure out how i want to defend round five here and it's probably going to be an alchemist which where do i want to place it though i actually want the alchemist to be in the range of both my heli and my adora but i want to be closer to my heli if that makes sense to prioritize the alchemist on my heli but later I, if I get a stronger stimulator or something, I want to be able to alt buff both of them. I'm not sure if that necessarily makes sense, but I'm hoping this alchemist placement accomplishes that. In the range of both, but pr closer to my heli. I'm not actually sure if it is closer to my heli, though. I think it is. We'll have to wait and see. Opponent's got a wall of fire with a tax sprayer, which actually is pretty interesting, too. I haven't really been paying too much attention to the right side of the screen here, as you guys can probably tell. But... They do have some interesting stuff going on. Maybe put Alchemist on last here, too. I am struggling a little bit. I'm not going to lie. Do I need to get a second heli down? I did not think we'd be struggling this much. I do get... No, I don't need a second heli, because now we have level 4 Adora, which is double Divine Bolt. So that's actually a pretty big DPS increase for my hero. I think we'll be good now. I should have had this Alchemist on last to begin with, though. Because the problem was my Alchemist was on close, which was taking too long to pop some of these white balloons. And my heli was dealing with a lot of the white balloons before the alchemist's DPS really kicked in, if that makes sense. But now with the alchemist on last, this is appearing to be a little bit more effective defense-wise. Opponent actually got a shimmer up really early, okay? Fair enough. And they actually have yet to leak, so if I can make them leak, I actually would be pretty happy with that. I don't think I'm going to be able to make them leak here, though. They use drone swarm, okay? Yeah, they appear to be pretty careful about their life count. Oh, we did make them leak. All right, actually, maybe, I, I don't know. Did I make them leak right now, or did they already leak before when I said make them leak? I'm kind of out of it right now. Let's lock in, let's lock in. Zebra balloons towards them. Let's get my pursuit up. Let's get Razor Rotors here in a second. And then we will need, obviously, this Elk buff going into round 11 as well. Our eco is actually pretty solid, all things considered. We have about 867. So... One more boost of economy, and I can get that Berserker Brew pretty easily. Now, here's the question. Is it going to buff my heli? It does. Okay, perfect. That's exactly how I want this placement. All right, nice. Opponent goes for an Engineer up at the top. Nicely done. And then when I buy Stronger Stimulant on this Alchemist, it will buff my Adora as well. And having Alk buffed Adora is actually pretty important defensively because the level 3 Adora ability with the Alk buff applied on Adora is very strong. Very underrated combination right there. So we do see the pawn's entire loadout now. It is Wizard, Tax Shooter, Engineer, which is honestly a kind of weird loadout. I'm going to just buy Stronger Stamina, by the way, preemptively. Since we have such a late game oriented loadout, I think pre-buying a little bit of defense is not necessarily bad. 
Why is the stronger stimulant only? Okay, now it's throwing on both of them. I was gonna say. Stronger stimulant should be able to buff two things reliably. And now that I have that up, probably just save up for my rubber to gold next. This is the plan. I'm not gonna go to lead to gold, the AI balloons, but that's totally fine. Unfor the only unfortunate thing for me is this map's not very great for rubber to gold because it's split path. So you pretty much have to choose between rubber to golding the synth balloons or rubber to golding the AI balloons. Or you have to get two rubber to golds up, which is obviously a lot more money spent. But I'll prioritize the scent. I'll prioritize the scent path, just because my opponent has an eco strategy. So if they don't eco at me, then it's bad for them. And if they do have eco at me, then it's also bad for them because they send me money. So it's like you know, I'm happy either way. And we'll just continue eco now, ladies and gentlemen. No problemo. The nice part about having a door too, which I kind of forget about all the time, is we have the blood sacrifice ability, and this ability can actually be really helpful for eco strategies. Because, say my opponent sends me a big rush, and I have to tower boost. And then, I'm in danger of getting re-rushed if I tower boost. What I can do, is sacrifice something expensive like my rubber to gold, level up Adora a ton with the sacrifice, and then use the bowl of light ability against a re-rush. So, the level 7 sacrifice can be extremely helpful here. If it comes down to it. But at the moment, we're just going to keep on maximizing my economy. We're not going to get a heli, heli farm down for a while. That's the one thing about heli farms. They're like 13k or something total cost. So, it's quite a bit of a save up. So, I'd rather just send a mix of pink balloon and yellow balloon eco right now. As opposed to just slowing down my eco for heli farm. And we'll just get it when the time comes. Yeah, Snowy Owl is playing this really weird, in all honesty. I mean, they're ecoing a little bit. But they don't have very much eco overall. They have double balloon trap. Which I guess the double balloon trap will make a little bit of money. But I don't even understand necessarily the th um, theory behind their loadout either. Like, Tack, Engineer, Wizard, I don't feel like has that much sy much synergy overall. Especially with Etienne as well. Etienne's like a weird hero to pair with that. Because Etienne is the camel detection hero. And obviously you have Wizard in your loadout. I don't know. Just an odd loadout. Also, that's I probably should have went for Lead to Gold for this round. This is probably the round to get my second rubber to gold up at the top because there are some AI ceramics this round and I'd like to... Yeah, I'm not going to get it up in time. I kind of misplayed that. I should have had a, I should have had a lead to gold at the start for those lead balloons and then had a rubber gold for the ceramics at the end. But I kind of missed out on both opportunities. It's fine either way. It's fine, it's fine. Let's just get this rubber to gold up now. Double rubber. Double trubber, trouble. Trouble. Uh, this is going to hit the rainbows. There are camo balloons this round, so we won't make any rubber gold income off the camos, but that's totally fine. And now that I have that up, probably best just to start getting heli farms. In all honesty. Start saving for some heli farms. We're at round 22. Adora still doesn't have level 10 bowl of light, but again, we can sacrifice to get that pretty easily. The way sacrifices work, by the way, I know some people probably don't realize, but it's 6600 to upgrade. So if I sacrifice something, it's four times efficiency when I sacrifice. So say I sacrifice something that costs like 1k plus. I think this is a little bit more than 1k, this this um, alchemist right here. That'll give me a little bit more than 4k of sacrifice power. So that's pretty much how it works. And for this fortified ZMG, let's get up a mob shove here. We'll definitely use the bowl of light when we pop this guy down a little bit. Getting in the middle path on the mob shove, I think, increases the shove strength, so that's very important. Bowl of Light's definitely not enough to pop it entirely, though. So we will have to pair the Bowl of Light with something. Hmm. I mean, I have Super Monkey, so I can get, like, some Super Monkey something. Like a Sun Avatar, maybe. I don't know. We still have a while, though, to have to really worry about the ZMG, so we might as well just get a support Chinook in the meantime. I don't have to worry about it for a bit. I'm thinking Sun Avatar is the play, in all honesty. Especially because they're sending me some leads. Okay. Now, what path do I want on the Sun Avatar is also a question. Probably Camo Detection Path is what I'm thinking. Bottom Path. Dude, this ZMG is so unbelievably slow. It's kind of crazy. And it's not even in the knockback range of my Super Monkey yet. It's going to get even slower once the Super Monkey starts DPSing it down. Alright, Sun Avatar has now been bought. Perfect. What level's a door? Level's 11. Okay, wait. A door increases attack speed and Super Monkeys in range get an additional plus one pierce. It's actually pretty decent, so 
I'd sacrifice this and get the extra plus one pierce on my super monkey. We'll take that. Now this should be enough to defend. And if this the nice part is if this NDTs as well, this the Super Sun Avatar can defend DTs pretty well. So I think I'll be vibing. Look how slow the ZMG is, by the way. The ZMG is absolutely crawling along my side of the screen here. This is good. Alright. That's Al that's Alk buff. That's Tower Boosts as well. Because they're sending DTs. Okay, we're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. I probably need tower boost anyways. We weren't doing as good as I would have liked. But either way, they sent me DTs on top of that too. So we actually got some increased value because of the DTs. And so now what I should do is I want to stole these rounds. So I'll actually target some helis up at the top here to knock back these ceramics. And I should stop my overall eco too. I've been ecoing too long. We'll just start saving for round 30. Another DT. We should defend this pretty easily. We have a mob shove, so the DT is coming at a snail's pace. Even though we only have one sun avatar to DPS it down, it's still not that bad. Alright, we're good. Not a problem. Keep on getting these support Chinooks up. Now, the question of the day is... Round 30, do I want to go for a temple with sun avatars? Because I have the military sacrifice, but the problem is I don't have support sacrifice for a temple. And support sacrifice is pretty important on your temple. Because you get camo detection and a bunch of other benefits. So it wouldn't be as good of a temple as a lot of strategies kind of get. Or do I just go for a perma brood sun avatars without the temple? And I'm kind of leaning towards the perma brood route right now. I think the perma brood route's a little bit smarter given the circumstances of this match. Especially because it was an aggressive match too. Like my opponent's in some rushes, so let's let's do the perm brew out. We got a perm brew up, and we got a bunch of sun a bunch of super monkeys in the range. This is gonna make all my sun avatars do three damage instead of one damage, which is huge. They'll get more range, they'll get more pierce, they'll get more attack speed. I'm kind of late to the perm brew, which is not great. Um. We still get it here in time, though. Yeah. And they haven't sold... Now, they're now sending me. Okay. They're now sending me. Let's get faster throwing on the Permabrew as well. Just so it buffs these Sun Avatars quicker. That's important. Honestly, just base Super Monkeys do a lot of damage as well. This is, this is an unfortified B BAD, by the way. So unfortified should not be that bad. And since we don't have a Temple giving us Camel Protection, we do have to make sure to cross path some of my sun avatars with the bottom path. Also, opponent starting to struggle against the AI balloons. No surprise there on the Ryan Mahalik channel. Okay, we appear to be defending fine. If it was fortified, I probably would have to tower boost and use Bowl of Light and some stuff, but since it's unfortified, I think we're chilling. Yeah, DTs are not much of a problem. We're good. Opponent struggling against AI. Are they dead? Bro, why does everyone die to AI? Like, what the heck, dude? Come on. All right, guys, our next opponent here, this guy had a seven win streak, so it's a pretty good opponent. We are going to door once again, but we're on a much more difficult map, so I feel like Super Monkey is not really the play. We're going to attack more to farm with the door, which honestly isn't even that bad of a combination, all things considered. This is a decent Adora strategy, and yeah, we'll start with our attack shooter right here. Opponent's starting with their ETN, so I'm curious as to what ETN loadout they are bringing. Bomb, okay, so it's probably Bomb Spike Factory Farm would be my guess. This should be a pretty fun matchup. Let's remove this obstacle here, and we'll send some green balloons. Actually, it's balloon boost these two. This will force a lot of leaks. Even though they have frag bombs and ET cleaning up, this still should force some good leaks on my opponents. And I don't think I'm going to go for... I'm trying to figure this out. I don't think I'm going to get my uh, a door down yet, by the way. I want to go for an early farm. And a door, we can just we can just power level a door later with sacrifices, anyways. So, go for an early farm here, and we'll upgrade attack shooter now. I don't know if that was a smart play. I also wanted to remove this obstacle because I'm going to place a door in kind of a weird positioning, and I'll explain my reasoning with the positioning later. But yeah, so we'll get a door down this round. Would be the plan. We're going to place a door right about here. Now it seems like a really bad spot. I know. But the reasoning behind this is one, it's going to clean up pretty well, but also I want to save these middle spots for tax shooters and mortars because tax shooters are really effective in this bend. 
And Adora, I don't feel like the placement's super important. As long as you can clean up well with Adora. And also, Adora can see through obstacles. So, this spot, the obstacle line of sight blocker is not a problem. So yeah, that's my thought process with it. Might seem a little bit weird at the start, but I think it makes decent sense. Let's get this up to a blade shooter. They got their own farm down nicely done. And we will keep on ecoing. Honestly, with this matchup though, I am kind of fine taking a late. I feel like our late game with this, low, this, this, with this loadout, holy cow, I can't talk sometimes, is not bad. We got, I mean, we got blue incineration, we've got overdrive spam to pop EDs, and we have level 20 bowl of light with Adora, which the level 20 bowl of light is surprisingly effective. So I'll kind of plan on taking a late. I probably will send some rushes throughout the game, don't get me wrong, just to limit my opponent's farms and force some defense and all of that. But late game is not bad for us, even if they have bomb spike factory farm, which is the expected loadout. Now they have their 103 cluster bomb up. That will defend everything early game for them. Bomb is really strong on this map. You don't actually need the heavy bombs upgrade. So that's one thing that's noteworthy. I probably can get my plantation here pretty soon, though. One more eco boost, so I get my plantation up. And that'll be pretty nice. Come on. Plantation, perfect. And then I'll cross bath this bad boy here soon as well. Long life. Valuable nanners here in a second. Nice. Perfect. All right. Let's send some zebras their way. I want to force the heavy bombs on their bomb shooter. They use drone swarm instead of even heavy bombs, which is interesting. I still think they need heavy bombs, right? Actually, yeah, they, we forced heavy bombs as well. That's perfect. I don't know if I can actually fit two mortars in here. I'm going to fit the mortar as far as possible to the right. I think I only can fit one with the tack. Yeah, it's a little bit unfortunate. That's fine. They got their spike factory in the back. Nicely done. We are going to send a lot of... um. I'm going to remove this obstacle. We're going to send some camo leads their way. To force their ETN level. There it is. Perfect. They sold their tax shooter for that. And then I'm going to send some space ceramics in the next round. To force a second cluster bomb. Is my plan. If they continue not rushing me, I'm not going to get any more defense up on my end, by the way. Space ceramics... All right, we force the drone swarm. After the drone swarm dies off, I'll send more space ceramics to force the second cluster. Drone swarm will die off here pretty soon. There it is. Oh, it's still actually up. That's fine. Second cluster bomb has been forced. Perfect. We should be good against that rush. I didn't really buy much defense at all. Just ha just got balloon buster on one of my mortars. But it appears to be enough against a pretty small rush. Just trying to be really greedy here. Definitely have the economy lead on them, on them I would say. Because we're tied in farms, but I have forced more defense on their end. I think we're definitely ahead on eco, if I were to guess. Which is always good. Now, the one weakness of my strategy and thing I'm a little bit worried about is DT defense. I'm not sure how effective... A door is against DTs, like the Bowl of Light. And Tack Mortar typically has to spend a lot of money to defend DTs. Well, with their loadout, they obviously defend DTs really cheaply with the Spike Storms and whatnot. So that might be a problem round for us, round 26. I might have to kind of break the bank a little bit. We'll see. Still does not appear that Star is rushing me at all. I'm just going to pre-place the second Tack Shooter right here. It's going to be like a Tack Sprayer. In case they do rush. And I'll start upgrading this mortar a little bit. Because we are actually starting to struggle a tiny bit against just AI balloons mixed with their eco. Our de defense was really weak. Alright, round 18. Are they going to send a fortified Moab? Right now, it appears the answer to that question is no. If they did send one, i probably get overdrive. I sell my blade shooter, I get overdrive, and I tower boost to defend. I could sell a bunch and get an artillery battery and defend without tower boosting, but that's a, quite a bit more expensive. And I have three tower boosts available, so I'm not afraid of tower boosting against a rush. That would have been the plan. I think I'll send them a fortified mole, by the way. Uh, end of round 19. I don't think that's a bad play because I can mix it in with some of the str stronger AI balloons. So I'll send this, and I'll send some zebras behind it. 
Okay, Force Drone Swarm and Tower Boost. I'll take that. Heavy Shells on our side. Uh, we should be good against this Moab. I kind of want to send them a... What's it called? Fortified BFB. I'm dead. No, I'm not. Oh, that, that was so bad, bro. That was so bad! I thought the Dora would be able to pick up the ceramics with the level 3 ability a little bit, but it didn't appear like it was doing that well. Hmm. Alright, Fortified BFB. They're probably going to use the Yukav ability against this, I'd imagine. Against the ceramics. <clears throat> we'll see. Yeah, there's the Yukav ability. So I can send them tight leads in round 23. Because they don't have Yukav ability available for round 23. Which is good for us. Uh, we will get up a artillery battery here. And I'm going to use the artillery battery ability. Okay, I force double recursive on their side. That's good. Okay, why are we struggling against AI balloons? Why is our artillery battery so bad? We're fine. <clears throat> All right. We're chilling, we're chilling, we're chilling. I think our plan is just honestly round 25 Wall Street. I don't think I'm able to get round 24 at this pace. So we'll aim for round 25. Which means I... Should I send them a fortified ZMG? That's normally a good rush against their loadout. I think I will. I don't know if this is smart. Actually, this is going to delay my own Wall Street, isn't it? I'm not going to go get round 25 Wall Street with sending this, I don't think. Yeah, they're using assassins against the lair, which is interesting. Instead of spike storms, which is what I would expect Tim to use. There's spike storm being used. All right. The insides are still going to be a problem. Are they good? It's looking like they are. We can get our Wall Street here. Perfect. And they're dead. Oh my gosh, they're dead. Okay. I think I would have been fine against the DT, by the way. My plan against the DT was tower boosting with Bowl of Light, and that would have defended. So they would have had to send me multiple DTs to force me to sell my Wall Street, which is good for me, but we took the win at the end of the day. I'll take it. How fitting is this, guys? We got the Adora map Sun Palace for our last match with Adora, and we're against Bebe Yaga here, who is starting with their two dart monkeys and Etienne. So I think we all know what loadout they are bringing, ladies and gentlemen. It is most likely dart glue gunner and farm here which is a pretty good loadout all things considered but it should be a fun time for me and also let's get my adorability coming in here and white balloons we're probably gonna go for a 110 alchemist i'm hoping this is enough defense i'm not entirely sure i might struggle though it really depends on if i can handle and not that my adora if the problem is if the adora chases it's gonna start popping some of these white balloons down before my alchemist gets to them and I need my Alchemist to hit all these White Bloons. Yeah, you see the Dora messed that up with the one shot just there. I think I'm just going to upgrade Double Divine Bolts. We'll just upgrade Double Divine Bolts on the Dora. So then we hopefully defend a little better. So I don't want to start... Oh, it looks like the problem's already happening that I was talking about. Oh no, it's just a cascading effect. Once my Dora starts chasing and popping some of these White Bloons down, it keeps happening. I think we're good now, though. Okay, we're chilling, we're chilling. So the Bloons. I'm assuming they're going to use a Drone Swarm here. Or a tower boost. Drone Swarm is used. Alright. Let's use Adora's level 3 ability here. We're good. Keep sending yellows. Alright, we force their sport and we force a tower boost on top of that. I'll take that. It's actually pretty good force on our end. We love to see that. And we are still hanging on here. Our defense did look a little sketchy for a while, but we're good. Time to start saving up for that Razor Rotors, ladies and gentlemen. 
And our eco is actually fantastic. These rounds have gotten stolen a ton because 800 eco in round eight is not typical. So my opponent hasn't really done a great job of anti stalling the rounds. And my targeting is kind of made in a way for us to stall as well. So this is great. Got to raise your rotors up. Everything's fine. My opponent got the juggernaut up. That's fine. Let's start upgrading my alchemist towards the berserker brew. I should be able to forward that for round 11 pretty easily here. Keep the alchemist on last. Or are they going to rush? It doesn't look like it at the moment. All right. Opponents got pretty crazy farms, though. They have four farms, one of them being a plantation. That's nothing to forget about for sure. That is quite good. Our Berserker Brew has been bought. All right, we'll get IFR on this as well. That's fine. Do I buy Stronger Stimulant preemptively? I think I will. Because pretty much I want the Stronger Stimulant to be applied on both things beforehand. I send a little bit of a rush. Okay, Force Tower Boost on their side. That's two Tower Boosts used, by the way, for, for Bebe Yaga. I'm probably mispronouncing their name. They went for a third plantation. The thing is, I don't even want to. The thing is, I don't even want to pressure them too hard. I need to get my lead to gold up for this round. Third plantation's crazy though. All right, we need to force another juggernaut at least. There's another juggernaut force. Okay. Yeah, dude. I I can't, I have an eco strategy. I can't I can't really pressure them too much. It's annoying, but I've got to kind of let them get these three plantations on their side. The good thing is, though, they definitely don't have a great eco. They stopped their eco for a while to get those plantations. So that is one thing I've kind of got going for myself. And we also obviously have a late game advantage, but late game advantage isn't going to mean much if I don't have enough money to defend the rush they can send. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Plan now is essentially make sure we're stalling these rounds out and getting as much money as possible. The nice part is we have a rubber to gold on the field now, so that's going to help us out a little bit. Actually, probably keeps gotten first. I feel like on first targeting, it's gonna maximize the pierce a little bit more consistently than on close. I think on close, it wasn't really utilizing its pierce well, the rubber to gold. So we'll keep it on first for now, or maybe even strong targeting. Strong ba is basically first targeting, but if they send like ceramics or something, it would target the ceramics instead. But at the moment, it's, it's pretty much throwing the same way first would be throwing. And should I go for a second rubber to gold? It's actually part of the thing I'm considering because it, saving up for a heli farm is quite hard this early on, but saving up for a second rubber to gold is not bad at all. And it will still give me value. They'll probably still, my opponent will probably still eco for a while here. And you've got some stronger AI rounds coming up too. So I think we'll do that once I get enough money for the second rubber to gold. And also just keep my heli. Okay, wait. They stopped ecoing? Are they? Nope. I was wondering if they're sending me a fortified mall, but it doesn't look like it. And as for rushing them, I don't really think it's worth really for me to rush at all. I might have already rushed too much, as crazy as that sounds. Like rushing early game was probably, in hindsight, not the smartest decision when I have an eco strategy like this. But, you know, we did it. So I'm not probably going to send any more rushes. I don't think it's necessarily smart. Alright, let's get a second lead to gold here. Perfect. Uh, puts on first. I don't want this alchemist popping balloons before my yeah, rubber to gold to get to him. And second rubber to gold. Perfect. We're double rubbered up now. That's great. And we will just keep on ecoing. They actually use drone swarm there. Does drone swarm defend the... I sent some zebras mixed in with the AI Moab. Okay, yeah, we forced a sharpshooter on their side. And zebra eco is not even that bad in all honesty anyways. Is that a f unfortified BFB? I think it is unfortified. If it is unfortified, I'm pretty sure I don't really need much at all. I can tower boost if it comes down to it. But we'll get down draft up anyways, because we'll be building into a heli farm. Level 3 ability. I'm pretty sure this defends. Tower boost. Okay, that was a little close. The downdraft did not really downdraft as well as I would have liked it to. So, I mean, I guess that's what happened, but not the end of the world at the end of the day. I'm actually just going to sacrifice you. Let's get up a thing on our side. All right, we have, an, we have some Adora leveling now, which is nice. 
Uh, we've got a Zeom G coming in. All right, I'm gonna need my Moab Shove. On the bright side, they are sending me a fortified ZMG, which is slowing down their own farms. I don't know if this is necessarily a smart rush from them for the amount it's going to force. Now, I have a couple ways I can defend this. I can defend this with the Sun Avatar and Tower Boost like I did earlier. Or I can wait as long as possible and just tech terror it at the very end. I'm honestly leaning towards that route of defense. So then I don't have to use another Tower Boost. It's a little bit more expensive, but then I can also farm in the meantime. Because we can wait super long before I tech terror. This is the nice part. We can wait very, very long. So let's get another support Chinook up in the meantime. And what I will do actually as well is I'm going to get up a knockback super monkey here. This is going to be the tech terror later. Knockback and mob shove put the ZMG like so slow. It's great. All right. Poem got their own monkey wall sheet up. Nicely done there. I actually kind of even want to wait to upgrade this into a Robo Monkey because if I pop the ZMG too quickly into BFBs, then it's actually bad for me. So I won't upgrade into a Robo Monkey yet. Can I go for another Heli Farm or is that too greedy? Uh, I could have maybe squeezed out another Heli Farm before I get up my Tech Terror, but I'll play it safe. I'll play it safe here. Let's get the Robo now. Everything's fine. Round 26. I probably should top my eco here pretty soon. I'll go for a little bit more, though. Yeah, I definitely could have went for another heli farm. I mean, you could start building up a heli farm. I still can afford my tech terror pretty easily here. Let's get the technological terror now. Perfect. Sell. Uh, We'll stop my eco at 4,000... Maybe 5,000 eco. 5,000 eco and they'll stop. I think it's fine. As far as eco is concerned. Honestly, their farms aren't as big, aren't as much as I would have thought they'd have at this point. They still have good farms, don't get me wrong, but they're not as crazy as I would have guessed from the early game. You know what I mean? 5,000 eco has been achieved. All right, perfect. Start locking these helis in place. They just got their banana center up. Nicely done. All right, I now need to figure out my perma brew location, which, hmm, the perma brew's range is so small. I'm thinking like right here is where I have my perma brew, so we need to start saving up for that. 55k, I should be able to afford that by around 30 here, I think. Not that bad of a save up. Yeah, perma brew has now been bought. That's perfect. In all honesty, now that I have the perma brew up, I'm gonna get a couple more heli farms. Because if they don't rush me around, if they don't rush me around 30, I don't really need to get defense. If they do rush me around 30, then we can get some sun avatars and we can do some stuff. And they are rushing me, okay. Let's sacrifice one of you. How's our damage looking? It's looking decent at the moment. I think we're, we're good here without selling a heli farm. I'd like to believe so. We got a door level 17, so the durability helped out quite a bit. Which is always nice. Tower business. Ball of light. Strong, strong, we're chilling. Let's get up an unstable concoction here. Or two. We're defending. I'm dead, I'm dead. No, I'm, oh my gosh. How to survive that? Oh my gosh. Tower boost.
Ball of light. I like need to shift my armor brew. I completely forgot I could do this, to be honest. I should have been doing this a while ago. Okay. A door ability to buff the sun avatar damage. I think we're defending. Please. Please, please, please. There's no freaking way, dude. I leaked against the rush. That's so crazy. Wait. We're good, we're good, we're good, we're good. Level 20 Bowl of Light's crazy. Tech Terror ability. We're fine. We're fine. What a game, bro. What a game. Let's go. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video with Adora. That was a crazy one to end it off on. Ryan Malik out. Peace, guys. Have a good one.